Hello and welcome to this section of the Trig and Precalculus Tutor. Here we're going to continue working with these Pythagorean identities that we've learned just a minute ago and solve uh, some problems to show you how to actually use them. And so let's just get started with that. What if you had something like secant of theta minus cosine of theta is equal to tangent theta times sine of theta. Now again, this is an identity, you know it's true, so you just need to manipulate the left-hand side into making it true. Now again, there's no right way to do them, there's lots of different ways to do them, you just need to make sure you understand every single step. So, we look at it and we say, right away, we, we don't have any squares anywhere, so we can't really apply a trig identity. So, the first thing I almost always do is write my trig rainbow, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant because then I can see, okay, what can I do? I know here I have a secant, so that goes with cosine, so I can write this as one over cosine theta minus cosine of theta. You don't seem to be getting anywhere, but you know that ultimately you kind of need to combine these things together because on the right-hand side you've got one term. Here we have two terms, so we know at the end of the day they need to come together somehow, so let's see if we can do that. These basically are two fractions, because when you think about it, this cosine theta is like cosine over one, right? So how can you do that? How can you, uh, how can you manipulate that? Well, uh, you can say this is one over cosine of theta minus cosine of theta over one. What would we need to multiply this second fraction by to give me a common denominator? Well, here I have a cosine. If I were to multiply this fraction by cosine of theta on the top and cosine of theta on the bottom, then I would have a cosine on the bottom to match this cosine, which would let me add those fractions together. Remember, when you're dealing with fractions, you can multiply the fraction by whatever you want, as long as you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. Here we're doing it only because we want to, add, to subtract these guys, and I have to have a common denominator to do it. So what I'm going to have is one over cosine of theta minus, this is cosine squared on the top, and this is cosine theta on the bottom. So here I've manipulated what I started with into something that I can really um, combine because now I have a common denominator. So on the top it'll just be one minus cosine squared of theta, and on the bottom it'll just be cosine of theta because I keep the, the same common denominator. Now I'm starting to get somewhere because Anytime you see a cosine squared or a sine squared or a tangent squared, you should start to automatically think about uh, Pythagorean identity. So we go over here and we see we don't have something that quite matches, but we have sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, right? That's not exactly what we have, but because I know I have a cosine squared over there, and here's a cosine squared here, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. If I were to take this sine squared and subtract it over here, then I would say cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So, so this cosine squared here that I have, notice I have a cosine squared here, I have 1 minus cosine squared in the numerator. And we just said that 1 minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared, right? So 1 minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared theta on the top, cosine theta on the bottom comes along for the ride. So again, this is a Pythagorean identity, but it's not written in the way that you might, uh, you know, expect it. You, you know, you're not always going to see it as sine squared plus cosine squared, put a 1 there. You're not always going to see that. You might see something like 1 minus cosine squared, or you might see 1 minus sine squared, 